Hello, my name is Jason Weiser, and this is the Honest Abe character modeling tutorial for Maya. Uh, this methodology is to create a quick, rough character model uh, that fulfills the proportions of the design character to be quickly thrown into a game or film production, and then a uh, detail can be added. We're going to start by getting an image onto a plane that we can use as a reference. And while, of course, we could use the actual image plane, uh, I prefer to bring a material onto plane. So I'm going to start by hitting the space bar to go to the front view. And I'm going to uh, go to the shelves, the polygon shelf, and go find a plane. And I'm going to create it in the space, hit 5 so it is visible. And then here in the channel box, I'm going to go to inputs for plane 1, and I'm going to set the width and the height to a square. I'm going to make this 20 by 20 using the tab to go between them. Zooming out, I'm now going to go and set this project. I've already prepared a folder, so I will just go File, Set Project, and here I will set my project. And the purpose of setting a project is in order to uh, make sure that any textures that I include in the, uh, in the project will be associated. And here I'm going to hit Create Default Workspace, and my project is set. Now I can go to the material editor called the Hypershade. I'll go to Windows, Rendering Editors, Hypershade. And in the Hypershade, by default, we have three materials, all of which we're going to ignore. Uh, we certainly do not want to use the Lambert material here uh, because it is the default, the default material for any object I create. Instead, I'll create a brand new Lambert. And having created it, I can now go to the channel box, sorry, to the attribute editor. And here in the attribute editor, I can click on the checker next to color and choose a file. And here now I have my Lambert, an empty file node, and the place 2D texture node that will control how it is positioned on a 3D object. Clicking on File, here in the Attribute Editor, I can click on the folder and grab the image I prepared for this project. Here is the diagram I've made of Abraham Lincoln. I hit Open. And finally, I grab my Lamberts and I can middle mouse drag it onto my plane. When I hit the number 6 on the keyboard, it becomes visible. And because the image was a square, 1024 by 1024, a power of 2 image, and because my plane is a square, I now have a good reference image that I can use to make my model. Now I will select the plane that has the texture. I want to be able to also have a side view, so I will hit Control D to duplicate this plane, and this duplicate I will now rotate on Y 90 degrees. I can hit W to move to make sure the side view is very clearly visible, and move it back as well. So I have the front view here and the side view here. If I hit the spacebar and go take a look at my side view, here I can see the side view and here I can see my front view. Now the last thing I'm going to do for these preparation steps is I'm going to go back to the polygon shelf and I'm going to grab a polygon cylinder. Uh, this will be the start of creating the body of this character. I create a quick cylinder and I go to the front view to line it up so that the bottom is lined up to the undercarriage of the character. Uh, going to the inputs, I'll set the height 
to be up to the neck of the character. I can hit uh, with the cylinder selected, I can go to shading and turn on x-ray and that allows me to see through the cylinder to the plane behind. I think in this case I want my cylinder to be about a 5.5 in height. And now I want to set my division height segments, subdivisions to be 5 and the axis to be only 8. This will give me uh, exactly how many I need for a basic character. Uh, while I'm here, I'll set my radius to about 1.8. Your mileage will vary based on your character. And now I am ready to start modeling. Now that I have my cylinder and my image planes, I'm going to go to Show Grid, select the cylinder, and I'll begin shaping the torso here in the front view. I'll right click to get my component modes and choose vertex. And selecting around a row of vertex, I'll hit the letter R for the scale tool and I will uniformly scale each row in order to get my form closer to the diagram. This top row of the five that I created is going to be for the neck. The next two will surround the arm. And again, I'm selecting around rows, hitting W for move, hitting R for scale, in order to more accurately reproduce my shape. I am not only modeling the body, I am modeling the clothing as well at the same time to get the overall form. And now that I have something decent in the front view, I go to the side view. I will right click to return to object mode so I can move this over the character again. Again, I'll go to Shading X-Ray and Show to turn off the grid just so I can see more easily. Right click again for Vertex Component Mode and I can hit the letter E on the keyboard to rotate. And now W for Move and instead of selecting all the vertices and scaling them, I'm just going to move them into position. In this case, I'm going to try to get the chest that's actually about where it would be for the shirt, rather than trying to get the jacket. The jacket I would later uh, cut and extrude out. And I'm doing this only because the shirts, the vest, are deeper in. It will be easier later if I have that be the default. So I'll come in just a little bit more. That looks about right to me. And now I'm going to adjust these vertices to make a hexagon. Holding down the shift key, I can add to my selection. So I have those six sided selected. This hexagon is what I'm going to extrude the arm from eventually. Hitting spacebar, I'll go back to my perspective view where I will right click, go to face, and delete one half of my model. I want to look at it first to make sure I'm getting the bottom and the top, just half the model. I hit delete, leaving the side that I'm going to use. I don't need these extra lines up here, so now is not a bad time to select these edges and hit 
the backspace key to remove them. I can select this vertex and remove it as well. Here on the bottom, I do need this vertex. I'm going to pull this down. And the reason why I need this will be perhaps easier to see here in the side view. I'll be extruding the leg. And I need to have this six-sided shape, just like I need for the arm. Going to the sub-object edge mode. Holding down shift to add to my selection. Here's the hexagon I will need for the leg. Here again is the hexagon that I will need for the arm. I can select these middle lines for both the leg and the arm and hit backspace. So those shapes are more visible. And I'm inclined also, going back to edge, to remove these additional lines as well. Zooming in to see more clearly this line that is dividing up my quad. My quad is just fine without that dividing line. And now the torso is ready to extrude limbs. Hitting spacebar to get to the perspective view. I will select this face. And now going to the front view. I'm going to go up to the menu. I am currently in the polygons menu. Animation is the default. I go to polygons and I'm going to click on edit mesh and then I'm going to click on the dotted line to break it out as a separate menu. I'll move it over here and with this polygon selected I will hit the extrude tool by selecting its option box. The option box opens up all of these potential options. I'm going to start by simply hitting apply and then pulling it out. I can select one of these boxes at the end to get the blue box in the middle which allows me to scale uniformly. This gives me slightly better results than simply using the scale tool. And now, clicking on this blue box at the end and dragging, I can flatten this box to get a really perfect flat line. I would have to do it twice. And then hitting W for move, I can pull this out, I can rotate, I can scale out a little bit, and I am about ready to extrude out the arm. I think from the side, I'd like to take a few moments still. In the Move tool, to adjust. In the side view. Here I have the shoulder. Going to the perspective view to once again select this face by right clicking on the model. And I can extrude out the arm. Uh, typically, I like to start with a couple of extrusions for the upper arm. Every time I hit apply, it creates the extrusion, but I still need to drag it out. I'll do a few extrusions for the elbow. I continue to pull out the form. This line here is so I can get a cup, and I'll do one last one for where it will connect to the hand. Going back to the perspective view, this would be a good time to start shaping this arm using the scale and move tool.
I can begin to get these divisions. I just cut here, I'm going to scale. And this one here as well. And rotate. To get the line that's described in the diagram. I bring this up so I can extrude the hand from it. And at this point, I am simply trying to better match the diagram. If we hit the letter F for focus, the selection becomes the center of the rotation, making it easier to move. I would like to select this edge. and bring it down a little bit just so the front of this arm is not so square and I'll do the same in the back In preparation for creating the hand, I could bring these in a little bit. And going back to the front view, I think I want to make this a little bit smaller. So you make your adjustments. One last change to make sure that an elbow is clear. I can go to the top view and I can rotate out the elbow and also take this line, move it out a little bit. So I'm beginning to imply where the elbow would bend. Pull out the bicep a little bit. And perhaps move these in a little bit to further accentuate the cut. Alright, now I can extrude a hand. I will select again this space and go into the front view, opening up extrude, I will hit apply to pull out the initial form, hit apply again, that was the wrist. I would like to get two extrusions for the palm and then another one for the space between the thumb and the fingers. This last one, I will non-uniform scale on the y-axis to squish a little bit. And all of these rows of vertices, I would like to now move up. So there's the top of the hand.
here's the form from which the palm, the thumb will be extruded. I notice that I am not modeling the hand flat, as if it were flat on a table. Uh, that tends to be a problem for basic rigging systems, where the rig is expected to add meat to the palm. Instead, you want to model the meat and allow the rigging to flatten the hand as necessary. Bring this down a little bit. Bring this up a little bit. On the back of the hand, from which the pinky will eventually be extruded. I'll bring this down even further. Bring this up just a little bit. Okay, so to extrude the thumb, I will first cut the thumb shape. I go to the interactive split tool, hit the option box, I can close the extrude. An interactive split, by default, is constrained to edges, which is what I'm going to use right now. Uh, it is possible, by turning this off, to get free-floating cuts, and as long as you end the cut on a line, all those cuts will take. So I'm going to start in this corner. Cut here. And then here. And you can right click to end it or simply hit enter. If I hit the letter Y on the keyboard, I return to the cut tool. And I can now cut in these support structures. Hitting Y again. And so now I have two quads around the center line. I'll do it again on the bottom. Hit Y. To make my initial triangle. Hitting Y again. To create my support structures. And the reason why the split tool is cutting in the middle of the lines is because the magnet tolerance is set to 2. If we cut that to only 1, or even lower, to perhaps only 0.5, we can get a little bit more flexibility. There might be a couple points where it will cut. Set it to maybe just 0.1, and you get a much smoother result, allowing you to cut anywhere you want, rather than what I now have to do which is move my results but what I've done here is I've created another six-sided shape What I've done here is I've created another shape that is not a rectangle, in this case an H-sided shape. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And when I backspace away these middle lines, it is easy for me to select this face, hit F to bring it to focus, making it easier to rotate around. I might scale it in a little bit and bring it up a little bit, but now I can extrude my thumb. So returning to the extrude tool, I can hit apply. Move, 
scale rotate hit apply again this will be for the knuckle hit apply again and this will be for the end bring it up and rotate and scale it flat before rotating again and that's a fine start now I'm going to cut in the shapes from which I'll extrude the fingers Once again, the interactive split tool. I want four fingers, so I need to cut enough lines to create the space between four fingers. Here's the first finger, and the space between the pointer and the middle finger. Here's the space between the middle finger and the ring finger. And finally the space between the ring finger and the pinky. Before I extrude any of this, I want to make these shapes much closer to squares and to give them enough space to really extrude out that part of the hand. I'll start by giving more space to the pinky by selecting all but the last line on the side and pushing it outward. Next I'll select each of these lines, the ones around the fingers but not the space between them. And going to the scale tool, I'll scale them flat or flatter. Looks like I accidentally created a couple of extra vertices here. Backspace removes. Oh, in this case, looks like I'll have to uh, weld it. So I will hit V for snaps. Go to W and then V for snaps and I will snap it up here and this one as well. And then I'll select around all three of those vertices. This shadow here represents uh, coexisting vertices, which is a kind of broken geometry. But with all three of those selected, I can go to the Merge tool and hit Merge. And that cleans them up and turns them into a single vertex. So I will flatten now each of these lines. And bring them up. The pinky, in the curve of the hand, is the lowest. Next comes the ring finger. And then, the middle finger and the pointer finger are approximately even, in terms of their height. I 
I can go to vertices and I can make these even more square. The next stage is much easier if these are cleaned up. Okay, I think this is about ready. Uh, the next step is to get the curve also in this top view or top-ish view. I'm going to rotate the space from which the pointer finger will come out a little bit that way. I'll rotate the pinky a lot more going out and I'll rotate the ring finger a little bit to get the natural curve of the hand. When rigging a hand, we typically want the fingers to not be parallel to each other. I'm going to rotate all of these so the fingers at least go forward. Scale them a little bit. And I think I'm nearly ready to start actually extruding the fingers. So I'll select each of these squares, or square-like forms, and I will hit Extrude. Apply, and each of these will come out in their own direction. So here we have the first joint. Hit apply again and again, and we make the first knuckle. Hit it again for the second joint, and twice more with a move in between to get the second knuckle. And then just one more extrude gives us the third and final joint. Now these fingers look a little odd. They look very square. This is where we start to scale. We can start by rotating each of these downward. Hitting F again allows for you to center the rotation and makes it easier to manipulate. I think I want to go to the top view. In the top view, I'll select the vertices of this finger, rotate them out, This can be a good time to change the width of the fingers. The pinky, for example, is currently exaggerated, so we can put it in just by selecting rows of vertices.
all of these fingers are suffering from uh, being too thick. So I'll grab the bottom of the joints and lift them up. And now I'll select the bottom of each of the knuckles. First and second. And raise those to represent where the joint would move. I accidentally selected this line up here. We bring it back down. Next, this one, bring it up. And we get the top of the knuckles. And these can go up. We're beginning to have a semblance of a hand like form. At this stage, it's mostly about the cleanup, adjusting each vertice and each edge to make sure that it looks more and more like a hand. I do want to try to have quads everywhere, four-sided shapes. So now would be a good time to use the interactive split poly tool to cut those quads in. It's okay if I have a triangle here at the end. Oh, this one. The nature of the tendons in the back of the hand make a triangle back here uh, reasonable. I backspace that edge. This edge can be more centered. We're trying for even tessellation, even spacing of the lines. Put it Y again for one last interactive with poly here on the top of the hand. Let that just go into the next tier. And I don't simply want to cut in vertices. I always want to make sure those vertices are serving a curve. So I can select these vertices, and I can lift them up a little bit. Or I can select these edges, and lift them up so that all vertices participate in a curve. Here in the bottom of the hand, I hit Y again for interactive split poly. So we work to define the palm.
And now I'm going to allow some triangles up here. I may decide to adjust those a little bit. And once again, we make adjustments. These lines can move up. This vertex down. This vertex up. Working and working to shape your palm. I can use a bit more time, but that's basically the idea. Before I leave the hand, I want to shake this thumb a little bit more. Add these vertices to the selection. Oops. Pull this out a little bit. Bring these in a little bit. Make sure it looks relatively curved. And a big difference is made when the edges are not so sharp. We can go to the sub object edge level, select all the edges on this model so far, and go to normals. Soften edge. Go into the object mode. We now have a much softer result. But we want, of course, a clear division between the hand and the sleeve. So we can select the edges at the border between the two. I'm holding down Alt, left mouse to rotate, middle mouse to move, right mouse to zoom, all with the Alt key. So having selected those edges, I can now go to Normals, Harden Edge, back to Object Mode, and we get a nice clear division. And for now, until I do much more uh, edits for cleaning up. I have a basic hand and arm extruded. And next we are going to extrude the leg. I'm going to hit 6 to bring back my background image so that textures are visible. And I will select the sub-object face component, the component level of the face for this object. Hitting spacebar and going to the front view, I can rotate this down a little bit and then make some extrusions. Select the option box, hit apply. This is just like the arm. Flatten, move it down, rotate a little bit, and shrink. And before we continue with our extrusions, now again is a good time to make some adjustments. that when I do extrude, I'm actually extruding the leg in the same form. That looks pretty good from the front view. Let's see how it appears from the side view. I'd say that's pretty skinny. I'll move these points aside. And 
these as well. Uh, legs and arms are both typically wider in the side view than they are in the front, especially with pants. Here we have Abraham Lincoln, who was quite tall. Very long legs. So selecting this face again. I will hit uh, the option box for extrude, hit apply, get an extrusion all the way down to the knee. Apply a couple of times for the knee. I'm going to rotate this bladder. And now I'll do just a couple of extrusions for the leg. One for the midway point, one to get down to the cuff. Later I would do more extrusions, more uh, cutting and moving to get the wrinkles, but for now I just want to define the location for the cuff. Because it helps to understand the form. And the leg is largely ready. Now from the side view, I'll select vertices. Grab all the vertices of the leg, of the knee of the leg. Now let's move them forward. I will rotate these vertices and pull them back a bit for a cap. Take all the vertices from the middle of the knee, push them forward a bit so I can begin to get where the pants will crease. And now I just want to make sure that I'm actually following the side view. This looks like it went a little bit far. And bring this up. Okay. I think that's looking pretty sharp for a low poly leg. Bring this in a little bit, bring this out a little bit. Pretty good. Okay, so now I will extrude the foot. I'll start with the bottom of the leg and I'll extrude just straight down. Going to the side view. I want to rotate this, bring it back, and shrink it. And non uniform scale it flat. Going to the front. Now this could be a good time to select 
this edge all the way down the model and move it in to create it more of a curve. Similarly, this edge in the back can be moved in. So now I can select these spaces in the front of the foot. And here in the side view, I can do a couple of extrusions. Extrude and scale. Here I have something of the arch. Extrude and scale. And one more to get the end of this shoe. Yay, duck feet. Easily fixed. Good scale and working in the side view. I can select all of these vertices. Using control to deselect that vertex and shift to add this vertex. I can scale these in as well. And then select edges. F for focus so that my rotations are easier. This down a little bit. Bring the toe down further. I'm going to select all the bottom of the foot. Might be easier actually in face. Select the entire bottom of the foot and scale it flat. Two scales always to get something to be flat. Move this down. This edge and this edge want to go in. And be smaller. These faces want to go in. This face wants to go in. And like the hand, this will take some tweaking before it looks like. Aids you. But the point of this process is not to get it perfect in the first try. This is an iterative process. The point is to work quickly to get a form with good edge loops that has the overall proportions desired so it can be quickly put into the production pipeline of a film or a game. So perfection is not the goal at this stage. Of course we will revise later. Now this is a bit more organized, I can move these down a bit. Not that much. 
just a little bit more roundness in the bottom of the foot. Bring this down for the point of the shoe. And this down as well. Decent covers the basic shape. Before I declare this leg done for now, this leg and foot, I want to get one more division here where the cuff meets the shoe. I want to get a bit more of an edge for that transition. Uh, rather than using the interactive split poly tool and cutting each of these lines individually, I'm going to use the insert edge loop tool. Click on it here, and then click about where I'd like the edge to go, and it cuts all the lines that are uh, in a ring around the line that I clicked on. And it creates that inserted edge. And now I can hit R for scale. Scale them out a little bit this way, and out a little bit this way. And I get something that uh, allows me, for example, to move the shoe inward and not disturb the cup. It would also be a good idea to select the back here of the foot and do one small extrusion. For the purposes of a heel. And because we love quads, well, let's try that again. Sometimes it's helpful to cut from the other side. We have enough of a foot. So for the last stage, I'll turn off the grid. For the last stage, I select all of these edges. I set them all to normals soften. And then I select the edge where pants meet shoe. Oops. Looks good. And I go to normals, hard edge and object mode. And for the purposes of this tutorial, that leg is done. The next stage is to add all the details of this character. We're going to use interactive split poly to cut in the forms and extrude to pull them out. The main detail I'm really interested in seeing on this character is the jacket, uh, both the way it extrudes from the torso and comes around behind the legs. I'm going to select the form, use spacebar to go to the front view, and hit interactive split. And I'm going to start up here and cut down the front of the body. Hit enter. Alt middle mouse to move and hit Y to re-engage this tool. Clicking down here, and then here, and then to the side. Oh, that needs to be fixed. Let's take a look at the vertices. Well, nothing particularly strange there. But 
Oh. Let's select all these vertices and hit weld, which is the merge button. So if there are any stray vertices, that can help take care of them. I'll select the edges to backspace those away. I'm going to backspace this one as well. And try cutting this again. Can't say that was closer. There's that line, which I can always fix later with the snaps tool. And that line. Yay! So now I will go to vertices, select a vertex, and with the move tool turned on, hold down the V key. I can select all these vertices, and I can snap them in place. Then select around them and hit merge. Select this edge that I don't want, backspace it away, and select this vertex and snap it to its neighbor before hitting merge again. Okay, that front looks pretty decent. For the sake of even spacing, I like to move those vertices apart. For the sake of a more rounded form, I will move these out. So now that we have the front looking pretty good, I will cut these two lines around the back. using the Interactive Strip Poly tool. Now cut. And then I cut. If it doesn't draw the line, it might still be adding bad vertices and if the bad vertices won't simply uh, disappear when hitting backspace, then they need to be snapped. And the bad shadow goes away when we hit merge. Uh, I find sometimes that when the model is not behaving quite as I'd like, uh, by just hitting the Interactive Strip Poly button, I can instead hit the option box and sometimes the tool behaves a bit better. I'll go to vertex, hit V and snap, hit V and snap, select around all of these, and hit merge. F for focus. And because we love quads, or at least triangles, nothing more than a four-sided space line. I hit Y to get back to track this with Poly. Nasty. There we go. Select this edge, backspace, Find the additional vertices, backspace, backspace. Alrighty. With that shape cut, we can now extrude the front of the jacket. So it's true, we can still spend a few moments now, and I will, uh, cutting this line that goes all the way around. So there's the collar. And now I can select all the faces. Along this front and side area.
and along the back. Everything that's meant to stick out in a silhouette. And all of those I can now exclude. Pulling out on the blue Z axis. I can go to the side view and check to see the jackets coming out or not. No, not yet. That's better. And going back here, I can go to vertices. Oop. Go to the move tool to finish that extrude. I can now go to vertices and I can V target weld in this outer edge. Because for now, I only want the extrude to show up where the jacket meets the shirt for the vest. Looks pretty good. I can select all these vertices and hit merge. And now I can adjust these edges so they better represent the form. This comes out a bit more. This line can rotate up. But then come in. That looks pretty decent from the front view. It'll take a moment to fix this shoulder. And from the side view, I can move these lines out. Since they're now part of the shape of the jacket. And these lines out as well. Need a bit more extrusion on this side. I'll select this space and this space and this space while I'm at it. And I'll do a quick extrude. And then again I'll use vertex snapping with the move tool. to remove the edges that I don't want.
select around all these vertices, hit merge. And now these vertices can come out. So a scene from the side view. I now have the vertices I need to get the back of the jacket. And pretty much every detail is done with these techniques. We either use interactive split poly or the insert loop tool to cut in the lines we want. And then the extrude tool to pull out the new shapes. to get the middle of the jacket between the legs I can take this entire side here and I can extrude this forward and then delete it. I delete it because that's going to be inside the model those forms This I will rotate, this I might rotate, I'd like this line to come back. And I can do it at an angle. Hmm. I think this line I can simply remove. This vertex gets snapped back in. This one simply gets moved in. This one gets snapped back in. And probably this one also can be snapped. But I'd like to leave a little bit of space there that's not snapped. So I select all these vertices, hit merge. And now in the front view, I make sure that that center line is flat. Select all these vertices and scale them flat. Put two non-uniform scales and then move them in so they match the center of the model. And now we have a full half of the model. Uh, certainly I need to soften normal edges. And certainly I would need to cut in the lapels, the vest, the shirt, all of those details, the major wrinkles in the body. That covers all the major techniques. For creating uh, pretty much any torso you could want to make.